Hello everyone, Redbeard here, back at it again, and today we have the final blog going over the content additions to Shadows of Change, uh, this time it being for Kislev. Now right out of the gate here, we get probably the most exciting part of the news, which is that uh, Black Library author David Geimer is going to be writing a brand new short story on the Witch of Kislev. Uh, and I think that's coming out on Wednesday of next week with the uh, full patch notes. So we'll be able to see if there's uh, actual like rework to races or what the changes are, the subtle changes. And this whole part of the intro here is just a not so concise way of you know reiterating. Mother Astankia is the only hag mother because Games Workshop and that they will not be exploring the separation between Gospodar and Ungol because Games Workshop. And just for the overview, we're getting the lore of hags. We're getting a Drazina archer lord. We're getting uh, Kislevite warriors. Oh, we're getting Nariaska Lesa, the Golden Knight, as a legendary hero. And we're getting a Frostworm, which is interesting. Um, and a pretty tacked on looking ice sled. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, starting with the lore of the hags. The spell lore, yay! Getting the lore of hags. Uh, which, it, it seems pretty interesting. I almost kind of like um, the Lost, I think it's the Lost and Found mod. Or maybe it's the Motherland mod. That adds the lore of hags. I almost like that version better. But th this is d definitely unique because it, it has like, basically it's almost like two lores in one. Uh, so available to Mother of Stanky and Hag, which is lore of the hag. Features six new spells and a lore attribute. The spell lore is focused primarily on disrupting and hexing enemy units, but with a twist as when overcasting these spells, they become augments that you can use on your own forces. This complements Mother Ostenkia's campaign mechanics of curses and blessings to provide more ways to play with this unique character in battle. So, and I'm not going to read any of the lore stuff, but... Uh, so, yeah, if you cast it regularly, it's going to be a curse. And then if you uh, upcast it, it's going to be a blessing. So, again, it's basically two lores in one, which is really cool. Uh, so, the lore attribute, fate of interlopers, area of hexes. Those trespassing upon this ground soon find their fate is completely sealed, their end decided. Fate of interlopers activates every time a lore of the hag spell is cast. It provides a debuff to enemy units while buffing your own troops simultaneously. So, the curse end of it is a minor decrease of leadership. The blessing end increases spell resistance. Um, so, the first spell, the Forbidden Fens. Uh, the hag beseeches ethereal forces to deep underground to seep upwards and hamper the progress of her enemies draining all momentum from them so the curse the uh does area of hexes uh negatively affects enemies speed charges speed and vigor and then the blessing is the whisper in the woods and augments po uh, positively affects allied speed charge speed vigor whilst granting strider and unspottable Pretty fun. Um, Witch Brew. The Hag's Cauldron erupts in a bubbling crescendo, splashing its contents in the Motherland's boundless wrath all over hopeless enemies. So the curse end of it is a breath spell, damages the units in its path, and applies the poison contact effect, which is definitely... And the animation for it is cool, which you can see on the blog. I don't know if I'll be able to put it up in the video or not. Um... Then the blessing side damages units in its path still, but applies a contact effect to friendly units, which heals them, boosts their vigor, and makes them immune to contact effects, which is pretty interesting. So you gotta like cast like a wind spell on your own troops if you want to heal them. It's just just it's different. It's interesting. So next, curse of the ancient witch, uh, hooded figure. Summoned by the hag whispers words of terror, both mortal and immortal, to those who should never, ever have gone wandering the woods. So the curse end of that is 
uh, the hex end, whatever you want to call it, negatively affects enemies' missile block chance armor and will spread to nearby enemies within the spell's spread range, which is interesting. Nice, like kind of like the uh, Nurgle stuff spreads almost. Uh, blessing augments, uh, imbues magical attacks, positively enhances armor piercing missile damage, base missile damage, and reload skill. Very uh, useful that. Kind of like uh, the spell on the Gust of True Flight. I think it's just in the Lore of Ice. Uh, Vengeance of Spirits is the next spell. The Hag channels a malevolent spirit into an enemy's soul to saturate their being and gradually tear them to bloody minuscule shreds from their inside out. The curse end of that is an area of direct damage. Damages enemies within the radius and applies the silence attribute like it's D&D or something. Uh, which stops affected units from being able to use abilities or cast spells. Yeah, if you're a D&D &D player, that, yeah, that's just silence. That's interesting, though, in this game. Um, the blessing end of that enhances the flows of winter magic in your uh, favor, or your allies' favor, uh, for spellcasters dealing damage in the process. Cool. Cursed Cauldron. Conjured up from the hag's cauldron, spectral missile, missile shoot towards upwards to rain carnage down upon the foe. Curse uh, vortex, a static central vortex fires out projectiles that spawn smaller moving vortexes upon impact. So very much uh, the um, the Chaos Dwarf spell, honestly. It, it looks a lot like the Chaos Dwarf. Um, I forget its name. Burning? I forget its, its name. But it shoots out like a missile, spawns a vortex, and spawns other vortex. I mean, that's basically... Uh, the Chaos Dwarf spell, which it's just a cool spell, especially with its new skin. But now, uh, if you upcast it, uh, the same as the above, but this vortex no longer harms friendly units that are caught in the area of effect, so you can uh, nullify friendly fire damage, which is very, very useful. Uh, Malediction of Madness, a sudden rush of nightmarish visions floods the victim's psyche, driving them to a fleeting madness that debilitates even the hardiest warrior. So the curse end of that negatively affects enemies' base weapon damage, AP damage, uh, melee attack, and inflicts rampage. Uh, the blessing increases uh, allies' base weapon damage, AP, melee attack, and inflicts rampage. Um, all great. I was really hoping to see a summon in there, like you can summon up some things in the woods or Maybe if it's upgraded, you can summon a incarnal, incarnate elemental beast. I don't think they have a skill for that, right? Maybe they do. I don't know. Um, or maybe they should get a skill for that. I don't know. But yeah. Um, I, I don't know. It looks really fun. It looks like a really... It, it honestly does look really good. I, I just kind of wanted to summon, I guess. Yeah. Great lore. Uh, very happy. Uh, moving on to the Drazina. It's a, a character steeped in Kislev lore, a lesser noble that lives beyond the walls of Kislev's great city and tends to his own lands and people. Ever ready to serve the Tsar or Tsarina, the Drazina are well connected to the nature that surrounds them and brings them with them to war items that have been handed down generation by generation. They will act as a great addition to Kislev's roster, bridging the gap that we have between the boyars and that of Mother Estankia and who could lead their armies. So... Um, it sounds like he's still decent in melee. Uh, despite being a faction of hybrid units, Kislev has lacked a truly hybrid lord type character to sit in between the melee-focused boyar and the magic-focused ice witch. The Drazina subscribes to the this playstyle by supporting missile lines with his abilities, whilst holding his own in melee with a powerful, armor-piercing great weapon. The, um, hybrid, the Drazina is able to deal significant uh, single target damage with his bow and able to deal armor piercing damage with his axe and melee so sounds like he's kind of like a more of a sniper with his bow which is great um, yeah missile unit enhancement units nearer to the Drazina will benefit from increased missile stats um, which right there th that alone is probably gonna <laughs> make him the most popular lord to bring now but then on top of Ammo replenishment. The Drazina is only the only unit in the Kislev roster that can replenish used up ammunition for friendly units, making him an effective support character for Kislevite missile lines. 
So again, between those two abilities, I bet he's going to be the most popular lord now. Because, I mean, yeah. I mean, unless you're bringing just like bears to the front, your armies are going to be missile heavy. So, and he's the best lord for that now. And he also gets a warhorse mount, which effectively makes him kind of like the quote-unquote ungull horse archer lord I was talking about in my previous videos. Uh, fills that role, which is fantastic. Um, and then as far as like the ammo replenishment, I would like to see like a single entity war wagon that could, uh, based on the tabletop model, that could uh, replenish ammo. That would be cool in the future, but um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, then moving on to the Golden Knight, Nariaska Lesa. Balancing out the legendary heroes on offer in Shadows of Change, Bentos looking for a character to join Kislev's ranks. The Golden Knight is the champion of the Ice Queen. This is an honorary rank bestowed to the greatest warrior among the Drazina, or occasionally in history, boyars are even the common soldiery. Nariaska Lesa is the daughter of the previous Golden Knight who died at the side of Tsar Boris. As a girl, Nuriaska learned swordcraft from her father, honing her skills as a warrior from the finest in the realm. Though she was derided by her peers, she stood forward as a candidate as the guardian of the Tsarina when the Drazina elected her father's successor. Nuriaska is tall and powerfully built, the physical equal of any mighty warrior, but her greatest attribute is her determination. Such is her drive that she trains longer and more intensely than any other, and in battle, she fights with a fury born of stubborn pride. In Kislev, she is unmatched in combat. Every Golden Knight is consecrated by the cult of Ursin, and so Nariaska bears both religious ornamentation in the favor of the Ice Court. In this way, she unifies the divided church and state. I still don't think she'll be better um, in melee than uh, Boris Ursus. Um, but I think otherwise she'll be a better duelist than anybody else on the Kislev roster. Um, her model looks great. Um, I might have, I, I might have liked the, the face to be a little more open, but you know what? I mean, I'll be like embodying the Golden Knight, um, kind of making her faceless kind of makes sense. So gameplay overview. The Golden Knight is a heavily armored guardian hero with a focus on protecting friendly characters and buffing the resolve of com comrades nearby. Wearing a full suit of armor and wielding the powerful magical... Sword, Urson's Claw. She is a bulwark, which many a foe will have difficulty overcoming. Um, so yeah, I thought, I, I imagined she would have had a nice sword like she does there. Um, so that's cool. The go uh, wait, wait, buddy, bodyguard. The Golden Knight is an exceptional protector, using her defensive abilities and stats to increase the durability of nearby friendly lords or heroes. So almost in the way like Felix can buff um, Guthrick or other lords and heroes. Um, so maybe she has a bound ability where she can, you know, target Katarin, for example, and give her defensive stats. And derp, so maybe like ward save or damage resistance or melee defense or any anything like that. Um, inspiration, the more damage sustained by the Golden Knight, the more determined surrounding friendly units become to fight on. So the less health she has, the more she will give like a leadership bonus to uh, surrounding friendly units, which is interesting. Uh, Duelist, the Golden Knight's durability and powerful soul sword allows her to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with melee lords and heroes. Yeah, Duelist. Mounts, Warhorse. Uh, eh. I, I really would have liked her to get, like, an elk mount, like I was talking about in previous video. Um, or even a bear. I mean, I know I don't really want to do up bears all the time. Or even a snow leopard. Again, I, I really think snow leopard would be a good mount. But elk. Elk was the one I was really uh, wishing for. But uh, war horse is okay, I guess. All right, moving on to just units. Uh, the first one is the Kislevite Warrior, which is interesting. Uh, we've come to better understand that not every unit in the DLC needs to be a centerpiece monster and headed in the other direction with this new unit, plugging a much-needed lower-tier infantry gap. 
the Kislevite warriors armed with their halberds at tier one uh, are decent at withstanding a charge and bound by their blood will fight to the bitter end for Kisla. We've taken inspiration in their design from older Mordheim miniatures, just like the Drazina, and creating something in a much closer feel and look to the land and woods that Mother Stankia protects. This is kind of a nothing burger of a unit, but uh, why you wouldn't just retroactively add armored Kossars with spears? I, I don't know. Um, but... Kislevite warriors are halberd-wielding infantry that occupy a low price point within the Kislev roster because they don't pay the tax of being a hybrid unit. Kislevite warriors have more entities than a standard Kislevite infantry unit, which makes them an effective meat shield for the rest of your army. So essentially, it's tar pit unit, uh, which is not bad for the Kislevite roster, just something to throw in the front line so that your the rest of your army can shoot longer. Uh, cheap. Kislevite warriors are the cheapest true melee unit of the Kislev roster, making them a great pick in the early game. Anti-large Kislevite warriors wield halberds, yada yada. Uh, frontline troops, yada yada. Uh, yeah. Kind of... I, I feel like it's an odd choice. Why wouldn't you just retroactively add the armored Kossars with spears? I don't know. Moving on to the Frostworm, you may recognize this name if you have ventured into Norskor or played a campaign of theirs. Now called the Chaos Frost Dragon, the Norskin unit is very different to Kislev's true Frostworm. A hulking, flightless beast deadly in combat with its massive fanged jaws, scything claws, and a vicious slashing tail, the Frostworm acts as both an individual unit or a mount for Katarin or her Ice Witches. Mind explosion. <laughs> this is definitely the the part of the this blog that just whoa, what? So yeah, you see an art here, Catherine riding this. Very interesting. Not expected. Uh, so I guess they're trying to make the differentiation that worms are now flightless dragons, basically. Uh, which, uh, I guess, sure. Classic Games Workshop with Warhammer constantly, like, changing the lore and making things a headache for people like me. Uh, the Frostworm is a deadly mid-tier monster which can move its way across the battlefield relatively quickly for a monster of its size with the top end of the roster getting particularly crowded. The Frostworm's power level is comparable to that of the Dark Elf War Hydra, or the Stegodon of the Lizardmen. This enables it to really stand out on its own as a unique pick when compared to the Elemental Bear or Incarnal Elemental Beasts. I feel like this is their way of trying to like explain around not doing a Frost Fiend, which again, that could have been a mount for Catarin or Ice Witches too. Uh, Frost being Frost Fiend being like this Ice Bat. I posited that it should be more like an Ice Owl owl to be uh, thematic with the Kislevite roster. That could have been a mount for Katarina and Ice Witches. A flying monster that would have been like mid-tier as well. Which I think is what I might have preferred, but I this is still a very cool unit. Uh, that's just somewhat odd that they didn't go for the Frost Fiend instead of this, but Again, I'm not, I'm not complaining. I think it's cool. Uh, fast. The Frostworm is a fast for a creature of its size, which enables it to maneuver into position quicker than most. So, wh what that means exactly, I'm not sure. Like, for a creature of its size, um, I doubt it's going to be like 90 speed by the way they're wording it, but I also doubt it'll be like 40 speed. I think it'll be maybe 60, 70 speed. So not super fast, but definitely fast for a monster of its size, I guess. Frostbite. The Frostworm utilizes Frostbite, obviously slowing enemies that it attacks. Uh, then, yeah, it's a mount. Very, very interesting. Um, and in the art, it shows like a, a breath animation. I assume because they didn't list it, it doesn't have breath attacks. It's just kind of part of its animation, but we'll see. 
So then, Ice Court Sled as the free LC. Ha 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 ha, hearty har har. I mean, honestly, by the art, it just, it looks like they took the, like, Kassar sled and just had made some fucking ice jet out the back. This does not look very inspired. Honestly, I'm not impressed. But yet, he starts with, uh, I can't tell you how pleased the team are to be finally releasing the ice court sled and game for you all. <clears throat> are you? Yes, I mean, this looks pretty uninspired. I'm being completely honest here. Not impressed. I am glad we're getting it. I am glad we're getting it, but it does not look like they spent much time on it. Gameplay overview. Like the wind, pulled by six of the finest steeds that Kislev has to offer the Ice Court Sled is the quickest way for Katarin to move around the battlefield. So I guess it's just pulled by horses. Um, if you... Uh, looking at an image later in the blog here, it does look like they might be like kind of ice horses. Which, it, that would be cool if that's the case. Um, unicorns or elks are kind of what I was thinking, but... Frost, or like ice horses, that's cool. Uh, indomitable, the momentum of the sled allows it to push through enemy infantry lines with ease, making it an effective unit for disrupting and confusing enemy formations. Um, okay, ice guard crew, so like every other chariot, <laughs> ice guard crew, two members of the ice guard fire their bows from the sled, allowing it to also be used as a missile chariot in a pinch. Which also, why wouldn't you just add this as a missile chariot unit? Just give us another unit alongside. Just a non-mount standard unit of ice guards on a sled. Um, longer range and frostbite attacks would is how it would be different than the bear sleds. And it wouldn't be pulled by bears. So it would be faster, uh, but less good in melee. And then it is a mount for just Katarin. Which, why wouldn't you make it a mount for ice uh, witches and frost maidens? It's not like a super unique sled or anything. It could totally be a mount for ice witches and uh, frost maidens, too. Yeah, um, like, just, I, I think they shouldn't have ended with... <laughs> The ice court sled. That should have been like maybe one of the first things because honestly, this is probably the most disappointing part of it to me. If it is working like they um, have posited here, I mean, but also the the design of it looks kind of uninspired. So, and then he just ends with you know um, talking about the Black Library book coming and. There's this cool image showing all of the content that comes with the Shadows of Change now. And yeah, when it's all put together like that, yeah. I I, it, I can safely say I, I think my, my money is worth going towards this. Which is, uh, I think, what they are trying to do. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and that's pretty much all of it. Um, I don't think we're getting anything until next week, Wednesday. Uh, where we will get the full change log and the Black Library uh, short story, I think, for Mother Estankia. And either, I don't know if they're planning to release the update then, or not. I mean, there's, I don't think there's any mention of here of when the actual update is being released. Uh, I think it's next week, but it could be, could not be. So we will have to see on that. But yeah, um, some things disappointing in here. Most of it, I think, is is good. It's great. I'm happy. Um, yeah, tell me what you guys think in the comments. Have a splendid day.